Hey everyone and welcome back. So I'm doing a review of the new 4K release of Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. And I do have the uh, Best Buy Steelbook here. As you can see, here's the front of the Steelbook. And there is the back. And just real quick, as far as the uh, casing goes, there's the inside and there are the two discs. Uh, colored orange, which I thought was a nice touch. And of course there is a standard release as well. Uh, but obviously I was able to get uh, the Steelbook, which I'm happy to have. It is actually my favorite Stanley Kubrick film, or at the very least it's tied with the Shining and I've been waiting for this to come out in 4k since it was first announced like a year and a half ago or something and so I decided to do just a very quick review of it. It's obviously Stanley Kubrick's uh, sort of probably most controversial film especially when it came out in 1971. I think it was even I think it ended up actually even being banned from several theaters uh, at least in the UK. Like it did get it like an X rating uh, so they cut parts of it out to get an R rating for example here in the States. Now the original uh, version is actually the one that has been on video I think for like the last like 20 years or something. I'm sure most of us have actually never even seen the R-rated version and of course this restoration has been in the works for a while and if I'm not mistaken um, this came from a new 4k scan from uh, I believe the original negative and a full restoration was done because they also were doing it just like they are doing it with uh, Kubrick's other films is creating 4k DCPs for future theatrical screenings as well. So to get into the details of this release I can probably put that down. You guys know what I'm reviewing. So let's just jump right into the picture quality. So first of all, I have to say uh, the picture quality is pretty amazing, taking into account how the film was actually made. So one thing you actually may notice, uh, depending on what you're comparing it to, is first off, uh, at least I noticed that the color reproduction is spot on. I know previous uh, video releases were a little off, especially in certain areas. This one seemed accurate as far as I could tell. Now, one thing that is noticeable is that previous video releases did have artificial sharpening uh, added to it, which brings out a false sense of detail. Now, luckily that sharpening is not here, but what, uh, so it does actually give a slight softness to the image, but it's actually the original image. The interesting thing about Clockwork Orange and uh, Barry Lyndon, for example, is the lenses that Stanley Kubrick used to make the films. Obviously Kubrick was very knowledgeable in a lot of the technical aspects across the board when it came to filmmaking and photography. He loved lenses of all kinds. Very fascinated by them. I mean, one probably one of the most famous stories is that the lens that I believe Zeiss created for the astronauts to use to take pictures on the moon, which had a very low aperture, uh, Kubrick was able to actually go to them and make them, uh, have them, I think, make sort of an equivalent lens that he used on Barry Lyndon so that he could actually light a lot of scenes with literally just candles. So for those of you who don't know, a uh, lower aperture, so the lower number in regards to the f-stop with photography or t-stop with uh, filmmaking, film cameras, the lower the number means the more the lens can pick up information in lower light settings. Now it does create other things. It can obviously soften the image a little bit and it, of course, it does create a shallower depth of field. Shallower depth of field has to do with your focal length. So for example, for me right now, on uh, I'm using a 35 millimeter lens with an f-stop of 1.4. So my focal length is obviously on me. That's why the background is a little bit blurry. Now the higher that number goes, it means that the focal length actually changes and you probably would see more in focus around me, but I would need more light to actually light me and the background. Now if you're shooting outside, for example, that's not a problem, you know, daylight or anything, or if you have a lot of lights going, then that's not a problem. Stanley Kubrick liked to experiment. So when it came especially to Clockwork Orange and Barry Lyndon, he wanted to use a lot of um, not just available light, um, because I think that's a misnomer, especially when it comes to filmmaking, but especially light that would have a little bit more of a natural thing, so he could light stuff. Even though you would have traditional lighting setups, especially to highlight people's faces and things like that, he wanted to use a lot of light that was coming from sources that would naturally be in a location, for example. So he needed a faster lens to do that. So in the end, it creates just a softer image, which is present here, but that's the way the film should look. It should not have that false sense of sharpness. So as far as the picture quality goes, uh, in my opinion, it is exactly the way the film should look or as close as possible. Now the audio is we're gonna get a little bit shaky. Now I must admit, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert on this. So the disc comes with two uh, versions of the original audio, quote unquote. The original audio has a 5.1 surround mix, which I think is the same mix that was used on older, like the previous Blu-ray and a couple other releases. I don't think it's technically new. Could be wrong about that. I don't think it's a new mix and it does come 
come with the uh, original mono track, but it's uh, again an older version of it in Dolby Digital, especially, which means it's uh, an older file, highly compressed. It's not going to be as good as sort of a newer restoration of it. So the audio is kind of where they kind of dropped the ball a little bit on this release. Not that it sounds bad. I mean, I did watch it with the 5.1 mix, and actually it sounded good. I'm not going to say it didn't. I'm not going to sit here and you know sort of falsely claim that like, well, no, it wasn't perfect because you know this didn't happen or this didn't match or whatever as far as i know i mean it seemed fine but i don't like it when releases don't have a proper restoration of the original theatrical mix and for some reason especially when it comes to studio releases we're not getting those and i don't know why this is where sometimes the smaller labels the boutique labels you know whatever you want to call them are really the ones who are doing better jobs at showcasing a lot of films because they will usually have a remix and the thing is i don't have a problem with a film having a remixed track at all. In fact, a lot of times actually it can be a lot of fun depending on the film. But I always want the original theatrical mix as an option on every release and um, we're just not getting that from most of the studios which doesn't make sense or in this case we're kind of getting it but not really like i mean it's yeah you can make the argument that it's there but it's such an older restoration of it in a very highly compressed format so you know it's like eh, thanks i guess you know it's like saying you washed my car but all you did was spray it with a hose it's like thank you i suppose now they included blu-ray uh is the original blu-ray that has been around for a while um which is kind of a shame because it's like i kind of wish it did have the newer transfer on it so it's just a repressing of the older one which again i another thing i don't understand that does seem to happen from time to time I, like the thing i think also uh, that was from universal and that had the same issue where the included blu-ray was just the old disc it's like well why not just include a blu-ray that also has the new transfer you know that's extra incentive for people who maybe haven't fully made the upgrade to 4k yet but they'll go out and they'll buy uh the new release in order to get at least it on blu-ray and of course they would already have a 4k version so when they do eventually upgrade of course they'd be ready i don't know it's decisions like this that i don't quite make that doesn't really quite make sense. So unfortunately, it is a little bit of a mixed bag as does seem to kind of be the case uh, with a lot of more studio releases. But honestly, in the main area where it does count and as far as the overall presentation of the film, again, in my opinion, the picture is the way it should look. And that is actually what I am gonna take away from this. And that does get a very high recommendation from me. And again, the audio is good. I'm not gonna sit here and complain about it. I'm more gonna complain more so, I guess what's missing <laughs> rather than actually what is there but what's missing technically should be there so i don't want to let that slide but the thing is at the end of the day obviously the overall presentation is what matters especially for a classic film like a clockwork orange again with caveats aside i do recommend this release and as i keep saying it is my favorite stanley kubrick film so uh yeah i'm very happy to finally have this in 4k and looking forward to more stanley kubrick films coming in 4k as well so what are we at now like four i think so got a few more to go so uh yeah so if you picked this one up, definitely let me know your thoughts. If you have any further questions about this one, definitely let me know. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.